If you're trying to change something about your life and you are not accessing as many possible supports or resources or insights or guides or whatever it is that you can get your filthy little hands on, then I would say you are not doing enough. Now, if you go one person, one place, one resource, and that does the trick for you, that's awesome. Good for you. You did it. For many of us, that doesn't work. We often need a variety of inputs, a variety of insights. And when I was treating my addiction and mental illness problems, I said to myself, I will do anything possible to never feel like this ever again. If you told me to get on the ground and lick the floor because it would reduce my anxiety symptoms or my low mood, or it would help me recover from addiction, I would have done it. You say jump. I said, hi, how high? Now I might've been a unique case. I was really suffering for nearly two decades. So I'm a, maybe a unique case, but it doesn't matter if it's addiction, mental illness. If you're struggling with something and you want to do something about it, humble yourself, surrender. If you're in enough pain, that's usually a little bit easier. There's a lovely saying, life punishes us first, then teaches us the lesson. So if you're in a position where you want to do something about what's going on and you're taking baby steps, you haven't accessed all the resources you know you need, I encourage you to get off that ass and go about doing it. And we're going to learn a little bit from the Stoics here, as we've been doing in a lot of these videos. I'm reading from the Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday. I hope you find this video helpful. My name is Mike Stroh. This is the Starts With Me channel. Okay, without further ado, I will get into the reading. Pillage from all sources. I'll never be ashamed to quote a bad writer with a good saying. Seneca on tranquility of mind, 11.8. One, one of the striking things about Seneca's letters and essays is how often he quotes the philosopher Epicurus. Why is that strange? Because Stoicism and Epicureanism are supposed to to be diametrically opposed philosophies. In reality, the differences, while significant, tend to be overblown. But this is true to form for Seneca. He was looking for wisdom, period. Didn't matter where it came from. This is something that a lot of fundamentalists in religion, philosophy, anything, seem to miss. Who cares whether some bit of wisdom is from a Stoic? Who cares whether it perfectly jibes with Stoicism? What matters is whether it makes your life better, whether it makes you better. What wisdom or help would you be able to find today if you stopped caring about affiliations and reputations? How much more could you see if you just focused on merit? I love this reading. That's why I'm doing it a day late. Shh. And um, it's amazing. So back to my earlier point. I did anything I could get my filthy little hands on to heal myself. So that meant psychiatry, that meant therapy, that meant 12-step work, that meant meditation practice and teaching, that meant reading this, reading that, doing this, doing that. I, many things I'm sure I could have done more, but I did everything within my capacity in the place of my life that I was in, and it helped a lot. I'll focus a little bit on one thing in particular today, and that is the 12 step programs. Now, the traditional, the traditions, if you will, over time, and I've broken them in this way many times, okay, is, is our public relations policy. So typically we're not supposed to talk about these things so much, but that's a, a generational thing. And there's millions of people that are doing it in these videos. Anyhow, the 12 steps have taught me so much, probably more than any other therapy, any other meditation school, frankly, more than the Stoics, although it's very much aligned with the Stoics. It's very much aligned with Buddhism. It's very much aligned with modern psychology. And this goes back to this idea that we often think we have the unique insight to the truth or our philosophy or our guru or our therapy is the best. And yes, we all have a unique connection or certain approaches, certain insights, certain ways of addressing problems 
and practicing them and learning them and teaching them are different. But fundamentally underneath all of these approaches, the wisdom is just the wisdom. And it spans approaches, it spans cultures, it spans generations and centuries and millennia, okay? Are you letting any of your affiliations get in the way of you learning something new? A lot of people in 12-step rooms are very dogmatic about the steps. They don't want to go outside the steps. They think everything's in the big book, blah, 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 which has perhaps served some purpose for them, but that's kind of not a healthy way to look at it. The same way if somebody's dogmatic in a religion or another philosophy or approach, we can learn so much from a variety of places. And what you tend to start to learn, at least I think, is that it's all kind of the same, which I already mentioned. So many of the things I've been talking about, so many of the things I read in this Daily Stoic, I've learned elsewhere. I've learned from different teachers. I've learned from different philosophies. It's just about the way it's assimilated into knowledge and then delivered to your ears and integrated into your life. So today, are there things you're pushing away, being ignorant to being ignorant towards being stubborn because you're stuck in your approach where you could just push yourself a little bit to be a bit more open, a little bit more curious, a little bit more willing to try something else, to listen to somebody else? Yeah, that's the question for today. Maybe to follow the ethos of these practices, I don't always do it perfectly, but let's draw that line down the center of the page, one side of the page. Who are my, or what are my philosophical wisdom, mental health, whatever? What are my core approaches that I'm tied to, that I honor? And what are some other ones that perhaps I find uh, I've found interesting on the surface? You know, you hear a little bit about something. Oh, that sounds cool. I might want to learn about that. Or maybe that you're a little bit more in the middle with. Is it possible to experiment or just learn a little bit about those things? Open your eyes, open your mind, and explore. Okay? This is about humility, openness, willingness, curiosity, and that commitment to be the best you can be. And we don't want to use that as a whip to criticize ourselves. Okay, this isn't, this isn't sort of forceful, I need to be the best. This is, I'm willing and open to doing uh, maybe a little tiny, a little bit more than what I am doing. Or if you think you need to do more or want to do more, whatever it is. Okay, well. If you found that helpful, please like this video, share this video, comment on it, subscribe to this channel, please. And that's about it. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I sincerely appreciate it. Take it easy. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.